We're so happy to be here at 5 p.m. here on Community Matters. Uh, we have Willie Holly Jr. He's a citizen. That's what he identifies as a citizen. And it's the first time we've had somebody on the show who is a citizen. That's it. No further identification necessary. That's all we need, that you are a citizen. I mean, you could be a citizen of Bolivia. It wouldn't matter. You're a citizen. Yes, sir. Citizen of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for coming down, Willie. Appreciate you having me here. So we talked, uh, we talked about what you know, we were going to talk about, and, and it is about history. Although I think language is also uh, woven in mm -hmm. between our uh, points of our discussion. Um, but let's talk about history. Let's talk about George Santayana. Uh, who uh, often quoted to say that uh, he who, uh, let's see, who, he who doesn't um, um, what is remember, it? remember history is doomed to repeat it. Yes. So much wisdom in that. The more you think about it, the more true it is. And we have something that interests you, namely, namely the Falls of Clyde. In fact, you're part of an organization called SOS, Save Our Ship, the Falls of Clyde. Please spread the word. Uh, the website is Falls of wait, falls of uh, friends of falls of Clyde dot org, friends of falls of Clyde dot org. What is it that well, you care about around the, around the ship? Well, first of all, I just want to clarify that this is not my organization. I'm not a member of the friends of the falls of Clyde. Uh, there is an organization of five hundred one three C but I'm not a member of that. I'm just truly a private citizen who is interested in an effort to save the Falls of Clyde. I came up with the SOS before I looked up their website, and it turned out it was the same. Oh, SOS. No it's so natural to say SOS with a ship. Then when I looked up on their website, they had the same logo, basically. So yeah. I just, it was coincidence. Yeah. But I want to be sure that the public understands that I am not a member of the organization. Got the it. Of the, uh, You're an observer, uh, a commentator, if you will. Yes. You know. So the Falls of Clyde, are you my recollection, uh, is a 19th century sailing ship. It, it sailed to Hawaii, I think. Um, and some mm, community-minded, historically-minded citizens brought it here back in the, I want to say, the 70s. Or even earlier. Even earlier, maybe the 60s, yeah? Maybe late 60s. I'm not positive yeah, right on in the there, complete right in there. history. But and that would be, uh, you know, almost 50 years it's, ago. It was here in 74 when I got here. Yeah. The Falls of Clyde was yeah. already here. And, stuff. and it, was, uh, it was parked at, um, uh, across from, oh, let's see, where, how do you define this? Because uh, uh, it isn't really well known anymore. That, that, that pier... Um, which is uh, not too far from Aloha Tower, just uh, Diamond Head of Aloha Tower. And it's been parked there for a long time. For many years, it was um, an active museum. True. And there was all kinds of exhibits inside. And I remember, too, and I thought this was really interesting at the time, mm -hmm. they, they hired it out for parties. Mm -hmm. You could rent the Falls of Clyde and have True. a really interesting party on the, the main deck and below and eat and drink and feel like you were in the 19th century. Um, but then it, it, uh, the Falls of Clyde kind of got less interesting. The generations come and go. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared. Nobody knew. Nobody, what is that old Hulk rusting there in the harbor? Why, why do we have that? Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are in a situation where it hasn't been maintained. It hasn't been maintained in the public eye either. Nobody knows what it is. It sits there, and inevitably somebody will say, let's get rid of it. It's an eyesore. It's mm -hmm. old junk. Let's get rid of it. Mm -hmm. You don't feel that way. Well, that day has already come when the public consensus is it's old, it's rusty, it's an eyesore, let's get rid of it. Yeah. And I believe a lot of times not truly knowing the history of that ship. And uh, a short synopsis, uh, it's the only ship of its kind that's built in that way, four-masted iron hull schooner in the world. So this is not just local or even American history here. We're talking about a world heritage uh, artifact here, you know. And just for Hawaii to be the last resting place off as, as a reef and stuff, I, do, I truly don't think it's time for that to happen. So I'm trying to garner uh, assistance and preventing that from happening, you know. 
it's a one of a kind last in the world and stuff so so <clears throat> why should we care about a 19th century ship that's all run down mm -hmm. um, um, why should why should we care why should the kids in school mm -hmm. the younger kids the older kids the generation that is so invested in Hawaii history, mm -hmm. sovereignty issues like that, True. why should we care about the Falls of Clyde? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe two reasons that come to mind for me. For the same reason that people go to uh, Pearl Harbor to see the Arizona Memorial, or the, the mighty Mo out there to Missouri, or the, or the Bowfin. The Bowfin. Yeah. For, for kind of like the same reasons that's already in play. It's shipping, it's history, and when you take these tours, et cetera, you always learn something. If nothing else, you know, a child like um, you know, on a day tour or summer fun or whatever will know more about what a ship is, what they used to be, what they're like, and do I have an interest in following something like that? Those two reasons, uh, to me, are enough to keep history in the presence of the upcoming generation. Yeah. No. We, we titled this, um, you know, uh, um, Hawaii's History of Sailing Ships. Um, thinking of Hawaii's history of sailing ships. And indeed, you know, I think people forget, don't they, that we do live on an island. It's 2,000 miles plus away from any Every major day. continent, a anything. Mm -hmm. We had to get here by way of these sailing ships. They are embedded in our history, and they should be embedded in our mind and memory right now, all of us, mm -hmm. because we live on the island. Uh, and it's remarkable that people reject that idea, and they, they don't go to the water. They don't go beyond the water. They don't go on sailing ships. They don't care about it. It's all planes, if it's anything. True. Um, and so what we have here is a denial of our own roots, if you will. Past and history yeah. here now, yeah. especially on Lulu Harbor, okay. The, boat days, I remember you know, uh, coming in by Aloha Tower. To me, um, those were the best, best days for Hawaii from, uh, I've been here over 40 years now. And for me, I missed it by 10 years. The glory <laughs> days of Hawaii would have been the, like the yeah. late 50s yeah. and et cetera, yeah. 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 when boat travel was the main trans motor transportation to get here and all that entailed, you know, the lays, the flowers, the music. Old anxiety. Oh, all, all, all of that, you know. <laughs> so this is, for me, a, a memory of what I really didn't see, but I was here just enough to catch the flavor of what I had missed. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you remember the old Oceania that used to I be. I do remember, and, yeah. That kind of thing where uh, it was just a, a different area. Valuable piece of history. That kind of thing. And I believe the uh, ship was right across the other side That's right. from the Oceania. It's just facing each other. Yeah. The Oceania was a Chinese um, uh, dinner uh, ship, a dinner, mm -hmm. dinner and theater ship. Dinner show. And a, a dinner show, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was from Hong Kong. It was a retired ship. And uh, Hiram Fong's son, Hiram Fong Jr., mm -hmm. uh, Hiram Fong the senator, right? Hiram Fong Jr. was a lawyer at the time, and he... He bought the thing mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, and he brought it over here and tried to reinvigorate it as a restaurant mm -hmm. uh, right there at Aloha Tower, as I recall. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was there for a few years, but unfortunately, it Time wasn't changed. popular. And you know, and it, I don't know, it's not here now. It's not here now. <laughs> so we're trying to get the Falls of Clyde not to follow the same route as the Ocean, yeah. you know, the last last voyage kind of thing. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, I, I would add this though too that mm. when <clears throat> when you when you have a Falls of Clyde, mm -hmm. it's just bristling with, as you said, historic information. It connects us to our past. I mean, if I'm a kid, let, let me, make me a ten-year-old kid, and I'm walking around and I see I see the binnacle mm -hmm. and the, the compass. I see all the navigational, the mm -hmm. sextant. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people in this how many people in this state have ever touched a sextant or a binnacle? Mm -hmm. That's the uh, you know the. Um, there you go, right okay, there. Okay, that's the, the part of the compass thing in the, uh -huh. on the bridge. Um, and uh, how many people you know know what it was like to sleep in a wooden ship, to eat in a wooden ship, mm -hmm. to imagine yourself crossing an ocean in a wooden ship? Not going to be as stable as these big cruise liners today. For sure. Or as you said, a, a four-masted schooner. This is a major ship, mm -hmm. and um, the wind would blow, <laughs> and it was an experience. Yep. Um, so, we, you know, we lose that if we lose uh, the Falls of Clyde. But problem is, it takes money. 
And when we come back from this break, Willie, okay. we're going to talk about what steps could be taken or could be to a... save the Falls of Clyde. Good. Right? That's uh, Will Willie Holly. Uh, talking about the Falls of Clyde. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thank you. Bingo, we're back. We're in a very interesting discussion and issue with uh, Willie Holly Jr. And he is a citizen and he has a point of view about the Falls of Clyde, which is uh, what, not a quarter mile from here uh, in the harbor, um, not open, um, deteriorating and deteriorating the public eye and people want to see it gone. Nobody wants to actually put Humpty back together again. Uh, and my question to Willie is, uh, in the best of all worlds, how would we save the Falls of Clyde? Uh, community involvement. Uh, and what I mean by community is not just Honolulu, not just Hawaii, but it's a worldwide heritage artifact item. So let's get the whole world involved in this SOS effort, okay? Just because I don't have what it takes doesn't mean that maybe someone else doesn't. So I'm trying to get the word spread, especially through Facebook and et cetera. Let's let the whole world know the situation is here in Honolulu Harbor, okay? Uh, through the multimedia means that we have today, that's pretty easy. Take a photo and Facebook it or Twitter it, et cetera, you know. Uh, uh, that and uh, efforts on a personal basis, one-on-one, -on -one, ask people to get involved, you know. Uh, we have uh, people who are uh, residents here of Ho in Hawaii. Who should care. Who, if they're going to make it home here, can truly demonstrate on a small level from some aspects that they truly want to call this home, you know. Uh, uh, you and I probably know some of the names more than the uh, general audience may, but anybody you think that can help, have, help spread the word, and the word will eventually get around to the proper people. Well, it's probably a timing issue, though. My recollection, mm -hmm. and maybe you know more about this, is that the, the impetus to getting rid of it is in the government, in the, in the maybe the State Department of Transportation, yes. which runs the harbor, and they say, this is an eyesore, get it out of here. Mm -hmm. We have to run our harbor now. Um, and there's nobody who is standing up for the ship. Um, years ago, you know, there was money. Years ago, it was an active museum. Mm -hmm. Years ago, there was an accumulation of artifacts from that period of time. True. Uh, there were docents that took people around and explained to them. It was an, I took that tour a couple mm -hmm. times. That, and it was a great way to spend your lunch hour, really. It was a restaurant right nearby. It was a great way to spend your lunch mm -hmm. hour. <clears throat> but that money seems to have dried up. The interest seems to have dried up. Now, what's surprising is we have Bishop Museum. Mm -hmm. We have other historical organizations run the palace and all that. Mission House. But they don't pay attention to Falls of Clyde. It's not in, you know, in the main channel for mm -hmm. them. And we have to get them interested, I think. And we have to find money, whether it's here or somewhere else. There are people all over the world that have a respect for Hawaiian history. True. I know people in California uh, who have studied it all their lives. They don't get here that often. 
but they study Hawaiian history all their lives. And they find it fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And this is part of it. Because yeah. the ship did ply uh, the Pacific to come here. It was part of the trade. They didn't put it on a barge and bring it here. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And just oddly enough, the Bishop Museum was the original owner of the Falls of Clyde. Mm. And they sold it to the friends of the Falls of Clyde for one dollar. You know, with uh, auspices, I think they were to, to manage it, take it over. Maintain it. Maintain it. And this last eight years, that hasn't been the case and stuff. So uh, I spoke with Darren, I think his name is Darren Young. The, Falls of Clyde, man. Uh, no, he's a Department oh. of Transportation. Oh, sure, yes, right. You know, uh, I got a nice letter from him. Darrell Young. Darryl he spoke Young. at our program last week. Oh, was yeah. That, yeah, yeah, I spoke yeah. with him. He was away, but I spoke with his aide, and he wrote me a nice letter when he got back. Thanks for the interest, but in the interest of our duty, et cetera, et cetera, which is expected for the government to say that, you know, yeah. so it wasn't unexpected. Yet the harbor wants to get it out and make it move and move it, and that's the only, I believe, problem that they have with it. It's not that it's rusted, it's not that it's an eyesore, it's just a danger from governmental perception. If it sinks in that harbor, then they had a massive cleanup job. And political problems. And because political of the costs. Problems. Yeah. The cost of astronomical to raise a ship like that or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, so if we could just get it moved out of Honolulu Harbor, say to Kualo Basin, right around on the other side, uh, they're going to redo all of Koala Basin. I don't know if you know that's I in do. Yeah. So they would be a perfect marriage of someone who needs a home, the ship, and an area that's being re redone, you know. With due regard for its historic, historic value. Right, and let it uh, return to um, uh, the dinner boat or giving kids tours so that over time it can help support itself in yeah, yeah, uh, Colorado yeah. Basin, et cetera. But it needs this chance, you know, for somebody to take on the possibility of doing that. Well, if we, if we take it out and sink it or whatever, that option's gone forever. That's it. That's it, and no more falls of Clyde. I mean, you 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 have to. Look the at divers it. would love it. <laughs> I've heard from the diving community. Well, you know, we're divers, so yeah, it'd be great for us. You yeah, know, maybe there's some treasure. Well, in I'm the just home saying, you know, but if it's the only one in the world, see, and that, that's what you know, it makes it different from any other ship like that. This is this is it. What would so. it take? I mean, uh, I look at a ship like that, and I say to myself, before this ship is seaworthy is not the right word, but mm -hmm. say historic worthy, museum worthy. Museum worthy. It's going to cost at least a quarter million dollars to put it in shape. Uh, oh, and I, I think more it's probably than that. more than that, a million dollars. This is one of a kind. One so. of a kind, two million dollars. We're bidding uh, here. Well, yeah. well, the highest bid came in at 30. Million. 30 million. To restore it, you can't see this, but this is what the Falls of Clyde looks yeah, like. I don't know if you can get a shot of that, but here's... Here's a, a picture that Willie is referring to about the Falls of Clyde. Yeah. That's the bowsprit over there, huh? Mm. This was in a better day, or is this that now? That was in a better day. Better day. It looked pretty uh, good in those days. And this is now. Oh, okay. This is Before now. and after. Before and after. Oh, you can see the, uh, the, extreme the rust uh, under the yeah. waterline. It has a steel hull. Yes. Yeah. And it partially sank, and it was floated up, so it didn't continue to sink. Yeah. It's in... Uh, dire need of um, help to move it from here to dry dock will take three million dollars that's just to get up out of the water be very careful yes you don't want it to sink or fall apart true a, a, a midship get a professional company to do this maybe the navy or yeah. salvage company salvage company that yeah. specializes in this kind of thing yeah. but the bid came in at roughly three million to move it from there to dry dock and that's before you start fixing it and that's before you start fixing it okay so at that point you have two options you can fix it to go back in the water or make it uh in place of restaurant row that we used to have mm -hmm. not restaurant row but uh Fisherman's Wharf over yeah, yeah. there. Fisherman's that, Wharf, yeah. You know, it fit right beautifully right along there. You know, I haven't spoken with OSHA yet, but you know, because they can't build hotels over there and stuff. So I mean, it may be a great little thing for them to get started with and use it. Great tourist property. attraction. 
For sure. And close enough to Waikiki, it's just hop, skip, and a jump. So yeah, yeah. There's a lot and, of and that whole area will be built for tourism anyway. Anyway. Yeah. You know. I spoke with um, ACVA this morning on the phone and trying to introduce the idea of all of the Kakaako construction. There are community benefits that are tied with those projects. You know, if they don't do low-income housing, they can do other things as community benefits. Yeah. So I'm tr I was trying to introduce them that if you're going to redo the harbor anyway, then why doesn't Camp School, Howard Hughes, and a couple of other guys who are doing They're all right of there, that. they benefit by it. They'd benefit by it, you know, just as a community benefit. You get together, and it's not even $3 million a piece then. Yeah. You know, and through, you know, it's something they are required to do anyway, community benefits. Anybody approach them about this? Well, I think I'm about the only one who's mentioned it to them. So we just need the right go between the liaisons to introduce an idea like that. Yeah. You know, all in the effort to save that shit. Pretty persuasive, actually, Willie. Yeah. I mean, it would benefit them and us and our sense of ourselves, you know? For sure. Our, our, our self-esteem, our self-image. That self -image, we care. That we care. That we care. We care about our past, we care about doing the right thing, we care about not doing the wrong thing. The wrong thing would be to sink it. That's the wrong thing. That would be the wrong thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, not even as a last option. Yeah. So, I, you seem to be saying, though, that the funds for this, mm -hmm. for the three million and the mm -hmm. 30 million, should come from what private owners private industry well, uh, what about everyone, the government everyone you know you who know. should lead this well i think the governor should you know uh speaking of cost uh, we have a project that's currently going on that's now at 10.5 billion dollars hmm. I think I could probably figure out yeah, which one that is. Talking about. Now that's ten thousand five hundred dollars for every man, woman, yes. and child on Oahu. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the guesstimate that uh, listed was about three point five billion. Now we're at ten point five, and not even halfway. We've done the easy part. So what's it really going to take to get that project done? So when the government said we don't have any money, then how you, you know, how do you explain how to reconcile this? That, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't fit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to raise taxes or whatever you're going to have to do to do this, uh, and talking of three or thirty million dollars, that's pocket change compared right? to ten, compared 10, to ten point five billion. billion yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. it's going to get high. So the government should play its proper role, and you know, that's what a government's for. You know, so it's enhancement and it's priorities. priorities. And, it's and, not and money. It's priorities. This should not be at the bottom of the priority list. For this long. For this long, yeah. For it's been a long time. Yes. And nobody has done anything. So you know what this reminds me of? The mm. natatorium. Same uh, thing. Same thing. Same thing. You know, kick the can, kick the can, and then say, oh, the can's all kicked now. Let's it's throw all it away. Kicked. <laughs> it's bent and ruined. <laughs> Let's kick it out to sea. That's basically and we lose heritage doing that, yeah. you know, so you know. Well good for you, Willie, that you that you care about this and that you have ideas and you're it really impresses me that you're going around and talking to people, oh, yeah. that you came here to talk about it, that you're talking to some of the landowners in the area, and the government in the area. Mm -hmm. You're relentless, Willie. Well, sometimes that's what, it's, what it takes. It also helps that I'm retired and I've got time to do this. <laughs> kind of stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, it's well, time to put it in. We're you know? at the end of our time, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a camera out there that you should talk to, that one. Uh, so I'd like you to close the show by talking to the public. Okay. We've talked about what they need to know, but can you tell them what to do? Man, woman, and child. Yes, sir. A an idea and a request is that we contact uh, our citizens here in Hawaii who would be instrumental in helping this project come to fruition. Uh, and a few days ago, there was an article in the paper by the Zuckerberg Foundation, uh, as in Facebook, Zuckerberg, just sold off stock to sell and, and to, to gain financing for philanthropic purposes. It was stated in the newspaper. Well, if this is qualifies as a philanthropic endeavor, so, uh, could you please <laughs> contact J. 
Chan Zuckerberg Foundation. It's their foundation for the philanthropic activity. Or uh, Pierre Omidyar, or Mr. Ellison, who's boated on the other side from the Falls of Clyde down <laughs> yeah, there, by right. the way. Right, right, you know, right. people who truly could uh, help the public in this endeavor. So maybe those three at this point who could satisfy this need for the, from the public. You know. Great suggestion. Yeah. So. Thank you, Willie Holly Jr. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for being You're an here. an elegant man, man and yeah, I appreciate your, your coming down. Thank you.